really understand mining, you have to understand that it serves two functions. First of all is to create new Bitcoins. And so it's called mining because of, of the comparison of Bitcoins to gold. You know, there's only so many Bitcoins to be mined and it takes effort to get to them. And the way that you would mine a Bitcoin, uh, this isn't really the way that most people get Bitcoins again. Uh, that's with the currency exchangers. But in the beginning, there were no Bitcoins. And to create them, these miners had to go and download this software program on their computer. And what that program would do was, was use the uh, processing power to try to solve these puzzles, these cryptographic puzzles that are designed for computers. They can't really be solved you know, by algebra or anything. They, they're complex mathematical problems. And so when a computer would solve one of these puzzles, the user would be rewarded with a batch of new Bitcoins. And they were free to spend those Bitcoins however they wanted. And so what mining is, is it's, a, it's everyone in the Bitcoin network who has the software is competing to solve these puzzles. And so once they solve one, they're rewarded with Bitcoins. And so you think like, okay, well, what's the point of all of this? First of all, it's to create new Bitcoins at a steady rate because they didn't want inflation to just go out of control. Uh, and, and so that's one function. But they also, mining is also the second function of it is to uh, manage all the transactions that are submitted to the Bitcoin network. So uh, when I, when I, if I were to use a Bitcoin to send someone a transaction or send someone funds online or whatever, I would submit this payment to the Bitcoin network, which is again is this peer-to-peer -peer network of all these people and so of all the users. And so these users process this transaction and that is kind of part of solving these cryptographic puzzles. So they're hand in hand. It's the two functions to create Bitcoins and to, and to authorize all these tra transactions to make sure that no one's double spending, uh, you know, trying to cheat the system. So that's what all these users are doing while they're creating Bitcoins. So the mining process is really the heart of the Bitcoin network and similar currencies like it. Digital wallets are the means of storing digital currencies like Bitcoin and its, its derivatives. And it's essentially just a file. Um, the way that you spend Bitcoins is there's a public address that identifies how many Bitcoins are in that. It's, called, it's like an account. It's like a bank account essentially, except it's not run by a bank. And so to spend the Bitcoins in that account, you have to have a private key. And this is a long uh, alphanumeric Di uh, like I think like 28 digits or something like that, but it's a, it's a long key. And so when you have that key, that's how you spend those funds. And so your digital wallet is essentially a file that manages all your account keys. And so that's stored on your computer. It can also be stored on a third party, like a cloud system, or it can be you know a third party server. And so uh, there are various software programs to manage that file for you. And so It'll help you say, I want to send funds to this person, or I want to purchase this. Maybe it'll be on your mobile phone. So you'll have this, okay, we're going to use this digital key to make this purchase. And so your, your electronic wallet is essentially how you manage your digital currency. Safety and security are often an issue that come up with Bitcoin transactions. Um, there, especially in the early days of Bitcoin, there were a lot of cases of people who were early adopters and the, the value of Bitcoin started to rise and they started to have substantial assets. But it was really an untested payment system and safeguarding that system was also pretty much untested. And we started to realize that it was, it was very common for hackers to be able to compromise computers, whether it was an individual user who had their, their electronic wallet stored on their own computer or whether it was a third party who was designated to safeguard all these assets and someone would hack onto their server, take all those private keys and essentially steal the Bitcoins from, from these people. And so it raised all these security concerns. Could Bitcoin ever be safe? And that was complicated by the fact that it's harder to trace Bitcoin transactions than it is credit card transactions or bank account transactions because at the end of the day, those trans those identity there are identities behind those bank account numbers, whereas Bitcoin is it's a little harder to find out who's behind those. And there's certain ways that you can find out sometimes, but people can also mask those ways and to avoid being detected. And so combined with a lot of these fraud losses and 
um, the anonymity of the payments. There are, there were, and still are con security concerns. I do think it's getting better because fraud awareness is is rising in in the Bitcoin and other digital currencies. So people are starting to realize that a lot of these third parties that are safeguarding digital wallets and so forth aren't really as trustworthy as you might hope that they would be. So either they're not taking the proper controls to prevent people from attacking their systems, or sometimes they just turn out to be criminal enterprises themselves who just pretend to be legitimate for a while, get a bunch of users, and then abscond with the proceeds. I think the more common trend now is to keep the assets yourself, or if you are going to store them on a third party server, then you make sure you do some due diligence and make sure that this company isn't going to rip them off. Bitcoin started out mostly as people who were interested in software development, uh, people who were interested in cryptocurrencies, and even it, it kind of had a libertarian feel to it because it was very un unregulated compared to other financial transactions. And so that was a very niche group of the population. But in, it, I think all this media attention has, has made mainstream interested in it. And so the question is, will Bitcoin be able to to survive in this environment, will people be willing to use it? And it is complex, especially when you get into the mining. I think a lot of people are just not going to take the time to understand it. But I don't necessarily know that that matters because a lot of people don't understand how their credit card works or how their debit card works. You know, they, they understand the basics of it. You know, are there transaction fees? Um, how safe is it to use? You know, is someone going to steal it? And, and things like that, but they don't necessarily know what parties are involved when they slide their card at the store or you know how all that is done. And that doesn't really matter because as long as you as long as consumers feel like it's safe and as long as they aren't being treated unreasonably and how that transaction goes through, then they're willing to use it. And there are groups who are trying to do this with Bitcoin too. There's there's a group called Circle in which you can use your credit card to buy Bitcoins. And the CEO of, that, of Circle has stated that what he's trying to do is make it to where people kind of forget that they're using Bitcoin. So that Bitcoin is the underlying transaction method of, of how the, the way that money is flowing from one party to another. But that's not really important to the people using it. They're just an easy way to send money to someone or to pay for something. And so that could be good because there are some advantages of Bitcoin. It can reduce merchant fees. Um, as compared to credit card companies um, and, and things like that. So some of those advantages might be useful. And so there are a lot of parties doing that. And I think also with new merchants accepting Bitcoin. So Overstock.com was one of the first major online retailers to ex start accepting Bitcoin. And eBay and PayPal are also flirting with the idea of accepting Bitcoin as well. So I think with the combination of new merchants who, who are willing to use Bitcoin and this kind of seamlessly integrating Bitcoin into payment systems without really needing to explain to people all the fine details of Bitcoin could lead to it becoming uh, popular in the mainstream.